Hey guys, it's me, 80s Morphle 4. Today, I'm going to give you guys my five takeaways from Barca 3 into Milan 2. Now, I'm going to obviously be a bit more sad in this video. I'll probably be a bit more emotional in this video. Um, you know, just give you guys my raw thoughts and everything. You know, this will be purely 100% unfiltered, so I'll have any editing. There won't be any timestamps. There, this will just be reacting because this was a disappointing game. This was a disappointing game, guys. And if you're a neutral that watched this game, you this would be a crazy game. And I wish I was a neutral, man. I really wish I was a neutral for this game because this was a crazy game. This was a fantastic game from start to finish. And those last 16 minutes is some of the most insane drama I've seen in the Champions League. Like, yeah, it is insane. Uh, putting that to a side, where there's a lot to discuss from this game. A lot to discuss. And I want you guys to help me out in the comment section below by giving your guys thoughts in the comment section below. And if you're new on here, please consider subscribing to the channel. Helps nullify, helps weave my pain. And obviously, like the video as well if you did enjoy. Share the video with your friends. Helps the channel grow. And do all that good stuff for me. Really does mean a lot for me. Now, getting back to the game. Uh, where do we even begin? When I saw the starting 11 from Xavi Hernandez, I was questioning myself. Let me give you guys my raw takes. Because I will be honest with you guys, I couldn't react to most of this game just because of the fact that I had to do a lot of stuff. I had to do my was in class earlier today. I had to do an exam. And I was trying to look in and out for this game. And by the time my exam finished, I was able to watch some parts of the game. But then next thing you know, in 20 minutes or so, I had to leave, pick up my sister from school and everything like that. I didn't even have a chance to watch the full game. As I wanted to. Unfortunately, it's not out on CBS yet. So, um, I did watch the goal. So, I did see majority of the second half. So, it's not like I missed much. Um, but really, um, there's a lot to discuss from this game. A lot to discuss. And when I saw the starting 11 from Xavi Hernandez, I was thinking to myself, did Xavi really learn anything from that game against Inter last week? He pretty much did the same exact 11 with the only difference being Gerard Piquet. And obviously, that was enforced because Christensen is injured. So I was thinking to myself, why would Xavi do the exact same E11? Which brings my first takeaway from this one video is why does Javi keep do why does Javi keep doing the same crap again and again? Is it why is he continuously starting Gavi and Pedri together sync all the time? And don't worry, I like Gavi, and I still think Gavi is a good player. However, we cannot be starting Gavi every single game. We need to give this guy some rest. Remember what Kuman did with Pedri? Kuman used Pedri in every single game, and look what happened. Pedri got a huge four-month injuries, and that's what it really dented us last season in the Champions League. I wouldn't be surprised if the same thing happens to Gavi. I wouldn't be surprised. And I'll be honest with you. Gavi was not very good against Inter Milan. I didn't think he had a good game whatsoever, home and away. And this is why I said in my video that Frankie de Jong should have started. And I still do believe that Frankie de Jong had a great game. I think Frankie de Jong had a great game. He was the reason why we were able to get those two goals. He was able to bring those crosses in and was able to help um, deliver those um, deliver those passes. And what you need for De Jong is you can, he can help you break down a low block kind of team. Because remember, guys, when Inter were soaking back and sinking up the pressure, they were really sitting back. And we and De Jong really helped us in that. And that's my thing is, that why didn't he start? Why? Why always start Gavi? Why? Another thing was that Alonso started this game. I don't know why Alonso started this game. I still don't understand what does Alonso bring. And once again, when Baldi comes on, we start to look better. How many times does Xavi need to be told this? We've been saying this for many games now. We've been saying this for three games consecutively. And Xavi's continuously done the same 11. It's almost as if he doesn't even care. Okay, so that's my first takeaway is that stop being predictable. Stop. Try different players in and out. Don't always do the same crap again and again. You know, there is some favoritism. It's very evidently clear. Okay? Number two is Xavi. Let me talk about the manager thing. I know a lot of Barca fans want Xavi to be sacked, especially for the fact that we go down to Europa League, which is very likely. Because let's be real, guys. There is a 5% chance we still stay in the Champions League. And that 5% is if Pleasant gets a result against Inter. If they can get a draw, it would be perfect. We got to bear in mind, though, Pleasant is on the road at the San Siro. I'll be honest with you guys, I don't see Pleasant doing it. But, of course, they could defy us and help us out. 
and we would also have to beat Bayern. We would also have to beat Bayern Munich and Victoria Pleasant, which I'll be honest with you, even if Inter do draw points against Pleasant, I don't know if we're going to beat Bayern. I have no idea. Okay? So we got to make that clear, you know? And for me right now, the Champions League was not my main objective this season. My main, the, main, the only objective I had in the Champions League was to just to get the bare minimum round to 16. And now that's already been failed, we're now going to have to go to plan B, which is go to the Europa League. And guys, in the Europa League, I want us to play our entire Academy 11. Play like the Barca B11 or Forfeit or whatever. Don't take that competition seriously. Because I know for a fact that if we take it seriously, we have to give up La Liga. We have to give up La Liga. And I want to win La Liga this season. And this is why my verdict is on Xavi. If we do not win La Liga this season, he should be sacked immediately. And that goes for, we need to win either the Europa League or La Liga. If he doesn't win either of the two, he should be sacked, in my opinion. I know it's a very harsh standard, but this is what my belief is. Because we got to win something, man. With the amount of money you spend, there's no excuses to win, not win anything. And there's going to be a lot of repercussions for us not, uh, not advancing to the Champions League round of 16. We're going to lose out a lot of massive revenue. And we need to try to make that revenue up for by by trying to, um, obviously, what's it called, uh, win La Liga. So that's my second takeaway from this game. Uh, is that still keep Javi Hernandez until well, let's just see what happens in La Liga because if we don't win La Liga this season then I would sack him for sure number three my third takeaway from this game is the defense is just awful Eric Garcia man I don't know how many more times I have to say this Eric Garcia is not good enough for this club he isn't he isn't a starter material at this club and Gerard Pique was terrible on the day Gerard Pique was horrible on the day I think Gerard Pique to, um, for me was terrible for the first goal Um, so yeah, I mean, like I said, man, I just feel like for me, um, with, um, what is it called? Um, with the air Garcia, I just don't think he's that good. I think Barca fans need to accept the air Garcia is just not that good. Look what he did for the Latar Martinez goal. Latar pretty much, he pretty much, um, what's the word called? He, he pretty much made him look like stupid. He, Latar made him look dumb. He basically be able to maneuver his way through and for i kn i know eric garcia is young at all but the amount of appreciation the amount of posts i see is ridiculous i'm sorry guys eric garcia will never be a guy i rate highly he will never be that good and let's be real guys if all of our center backs are available he wouldn't be starting for us and the same goes for Jarrah P. A. He, he's got to retire man he's he's done he's finished because that first goal was completely stupid how do you not realize that guy was on side you literally kept him on side you literally did like, it's, it's ridiculous, stupid defending, man. So, defensive mistakes really cost us in this game. My fourth takeaway for this game is that counterattacking teams just excel against Barca. Whenever we play against a counterattacking team, they always know how to go against us. Because what they tend to do is to play very narrow defensively. And anytime we go attack move and they intercept the ball, they have a lot of open space because we play with a high line. And when you play with a high line, you're going to get a lot of risk. Because Inter on the day created a lot of chances. They could have easily scored more than three goals. Ter Stegen had to make some brilliant saves. Look at the last minute save Ter Stegen did. Because if Ter Stegen didn't make that save, we would be officially out of the Champions League. Officially out of the Champions League. Asalini, I think is his name. Some Inter guy. I, I, I probably butchered his name. He missed a chance. And that chance could be the difference for us to make them. I, I still think we're going out regardless but that could be costly let's just put it this way and i just think that for me guys um it's very very pivotal very crucial to understand that i just think that um um the def uh, the um counter-attacking teams are so good i mean look at the teams they played in, in europe you know eintracht frankfurt they were able to get at us you know we got look at benfica for instance look at um what's another team that we played counter-attacking psg you know, a lot of teams that play counterattacking against us can excel against us. And we leave so much open space. And this is my problem, is that we always do the same thing again and again. Like, why are we so defensively uneven? You know? And finally, number five, my last takeaway is that I got to give some appreciation to Inter Milan. I don't feel it would be right if I just criticize and uh, be harsh on Barca. I need to give some appreciation to Inter. Because what they did in this group is fantastic. They defied the odds. They were they are ninth right now in the Serie A, I think. And the fact that they're actually managing to advance out of the Champions League group 
knocking out a five-time UCL winner, Barcelona, is quite an incredible achievement. It is insane. It is absolutely ridiculously insane. And let's not kid ourselves here, guys. Inter Milan were good last season at big games. Like, they were unlucky against Real Madrid. They were unlucky against Liverpool. And guys, they actually played decently well against those two teams. It's not like as if they let those teams smash through them. Obviously, they didn't, um, obviously, you know, both, they failed to um, score enough goals both home and away against those teams, but they put up a very good competitive fight. It wasn't easy. Real Madrid, Liverpool had to work hard to get those wins, you know? And that's my thing is that I just think that for me, you got to give credit to Inter Milan because what they're doing is insane. And I really would like to, I want to see how Inter do in the round of 16. Uh, because if they can get like a draw, like a favorable draw, like let's say against like PSG, for instance, I would love to see an Inter Milan versus PSG would be a fantastic match. So, but anyways, um, I'm we're gonna um, like I said, guys, that, those are my quick thoughts on the match. I'm just gonna go over the goal scores real quick. Uh, Dembele scored the opening goal. I was very very happy. Rafinha basically created that goal, gave the pass to Roberto, and Roberto basically gave Dembele an easy tap. And then the second goal, the second goal in the game was that obviously. The misclear and the offside thing, which obviously PK failed to get alert. I think Ter Second also should be at fault for that goal. And then obviously, um, then the in the inter second goal that was a really good goal from Latar Martinez. The way he just dribbled past Eric Garcia as if he wasn't there was pretty insane. The way he was able to get past him with quick, um, quick maneuvering feet like was very good. I thought that was a very clinical finish. I didn't think it was that good in the game, but he did show up. He was clinical and he was decisive. And the third, the second goal from Barca, Lewandowski. What a, what a finish that was. A bit of a deflection there, but you know, still counts. And then the third goal from Inter was insane. Um, Gossens putting that counter attack. Latar Martinez having the acres of space, giving it a play for Gossens for the tap in. And then that third goal from Barca was insane. I think it was a cross from Eric Garcia for Lewandowski to head it in. And then that goal, or should I say the save that Asselini had at the very last minute. So. As I said, it was a very dramatic match, a very insane match. What a match to remember. Definitely a match I might watch in the future. Uh, maybe when I'm not, like, you know, in this kind of period, I stayed in. Um, you know, like I said, it was a very, very fantastic match. So, as I said, I want you guys to comment down below what you guys think of the match. You know, it was a good match to watch regardless. Um, I hope you guys did enjoy. Comment down below your thoughts in the comment section below. Like this video if you did enjoy. And I want to know what you guys think in this one. Do you guys think Xavi is at fault for the game? Do you guys think the players are at fault? Because I'm going to say this right now, guys. I'm going to say this right now. If we had a full squad and our defense was actually not injured, I actually still think we I, I think we beat Inter Milan. I think the defense really uh, hampered us in the day. Because I think the defense was really the main reason why we didn't, we didn't win today, in my opinion. So, yeah, that's going to be pretty much it for today. I want you guys to comment down below. This, this phrase I have for this video is... The phrase I have in this video is called... Hmm, I'm trying to think about a random one. Let's put 13. 13. 13 is a phrase. 13 is a phrase. Because that's the day that the video is actually being uploaded on. So, <laughs> yeah. Let's just do 13. Put 13 in the comment section below if you made it all the way far in this video. So, make sure you guys do all this stuff. As I said, follow me on the social media platforms. This is Christian below. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.